Treatment of Neuropathic Pain A 73-year-old woman with hyperlipidemia, depression, and type 2 diabetes mellitus presents to the clinic for follow-up of diabetic polyneuropathy. She has no improvement in her lower limb pain after taking gabapentin 1200 mg three times a day for the last three months. Severe pain impacts her daily living and she would like to know if there's anything else she can try. Neuropathic pain affects 20 million Americans and has many underlying etiologies including polyneuropathies, focal peripheral nerve and nerve root injuries, and spinal cord and brain pathologies. Chronic pain can be debilitating, affect quality of life, and create financial burden. Associated symptoms frequently include mood disturbances, sleep problems, and neurocognitive symptoms. The dynamics of underlying cause and comorbidities require an individualized, multimodal approach to evaluation and treatment. Neuropathic pain can manifest as varying combinations of spontaneous pain, unpleasant abnormal sensations, or evoked pain from increased sensitivity to normal or subthreshold stimuli. Pain is thought to be driven by ectopic firing of peripheral nociceptors and lack of inhibition from descending spinal pathways, both of which are key targets for interventions. Management of neuropathic pain involves both pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment. Identifying and addressing the etiology of the pain is of great importance as this can result in pain relief and prevent worsening symptoms. First-line medications for neuropathic pain include gabapentinoids, tricyclic antidepressants, or TCAs, serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, or SNRIs, and sodium channel blockers. Gabapentinoids are often the first medication to be trialed, with pregabalin being the only medication with a level A recommendation by the American Academy of Neurology. TCAs, such as amitriptyline, and SNRIs, such as duloxetine, are used effectively for treating neuropathic pain. Their analgesic effect often has a quicker onset at a lower dose than their antidepressant effect. Adverse effects such as sedation and cholinergic blockade with TCAs, as well as nausea and hypertension with SNRIs may occur. Sodium channel blockers such as carbamazepine, valproic acid, and lamotrigine show comparable efficacy but may not be preferred due to side effects. Optimizing medical management requires considering patients' comorbidities when selecting treatments and preventing polypharmacy. For patients with partial relief from monotherapy with a first-line medication, a combination of two or more agents may be considered. Opioid analgesics should generally be avoided due to the risk of dependence and opioid-induced hyperalgesia. Procedural interventions such as epidural injections for radicular pain and neuromodulation can also be advantageous given the lack of systemic side effects. Among non-pharmacologic approaches, exercise, including but not limited to aerobics, stretching, and yoga, has been shown to be effective, possibly due to endogenous endorphins and improvement of the underlying cause of polyneuropathy. Limited evidence exists regarding the benefits of acupuncture and neurofeedback. Neuropathic pain can be challenging to manage, and a multimodal approach is often necessary. The goals of chronic neuropathic pain management should include pain control, as well as optimization of sleep, mood, and functional status. First-line medications should generally be trialed for six to eight weeks before considering alternatives. Our patient has a persistent neuropathic pain despite taking gabapentin at a therapeutic dose. Given her comorbid depression, an SNRI such as duloxetine can be trialed. In addition, the patient should be encouraged to add low-impact exercise to her daily routine and address her underlying medical conditions. Close follow-up and involvement of a support network are ideal for continuous optimization of her treatment plan. For more information on this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com neurobytes.